This is episode 182 of The Lab. I'm Brad Barton. And I'm Phil Barton. You know what we have on the show page today, Phil? What's that? We have links with more information. Yeah, and you can find always... those by visiting thelabwithbrad.com. Cool. So tell me how much you love dinosaurs. I am so sick of dinosaurs. <laughs> I think they should get hit by a rock and all die. See? Yeah. That's bad luck. This is a retroactive <laughs> cursing that you've done. Yes. The and, reason and it the was dinosaurs effective. died is because, because of Brad, Brad got sick of them. That's exactly what happened. <laughs> wow, I gave you so much importance all of a sudden. <laughs> yeah, no. I am, I am an all-powerful... Ah, not even close. Dinosaurs. <sighs> I, the yes. Jurassic ended um, about 145 million years ago. The Cretaceous, which is the era we're in now, lasted for 79 million years till around 66 million years ago. And I got to say, it ended 65 million years ago. That's what I learned in school. I don't know how they added the other million years there wrong. <laughs> okay, so 65 million years ago. <laughs> yeah. 65 million years ago. So the Jurassic ended, right? Yes, the Jurassic it, ended. It didn't seem to have much of a die-out. In fact, the only mention of any die-out at all at the end of the Jurassic was in one sort of throwaway line in one article I read on the Cretaceous. And actually, I ran into that a lot. A whole lot of the most interesting things is just like, well, since it's been known since blah, 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 that yada, yada, yada. I'm like, really? Since when? Tell me more. Come back! It's been known. Who knew that? I didn't know. <laughs> I didn't know. <laughs> but yeah, the uh, Jurassic ended, the Cretaceous began, and things were just sort of swimming along as they had been. Various large yeah. dinosaurs. They, they swim too. Mm -hmm. They yeah. swim too. The continents, which had begun breaking, or uh, Pangaea, which had begun breaking up. They were in jealous the Jurassic. Of fish. They decided to swim. Uh, we'll get to them in a moment. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Pangaea had been breaking up, right? Uh, mm. Laurasia had broken away from Gondwana. Mm -hmm. North America had broken off and skittered off. Mm -hmm. During the uh, during the Cretaceous, Africa, Antarctica, and Australia finally broke away. Well, I, <laughs> let me put, put that another way: South America, Australia, and Antarctica finally broke away from Africa. Ah. India and Madagascar was still stuck together and had not yet com uh, collided with mm -hmm. Asia to start building the Himalayas. When we were describing what the continents were doing last time, we sort of covered both the Jurassic and the Cretaceous. Yeah, we're ambitious like that. Yeah, we just <laughs> got real excited. You should see the map. Uh, all these things moving around. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. Something happened to watch. somewhere along the way. You remember those sauropods? Yes. Giant plant eaters with their long necks and long tails. Well, a lot of them died. Uh, the Diplodocus is this is this. Mm hmm. And then uh, they were followed shortly back thereafter by the Titanodons, which were also big giant sauropods. They just sort of took over the niche and relatively quickly. Titanod titanodons? Yeah, I'm titanodons. pretty sure I'm saying that wrong. Titan. Tit it comes from the word titan. Meaning giant titanodons. <laughs> okay. Well, cool. And then uh, it wasn't towards the end. It wasn't until towards the end of the Cretaceous that we get some of the most iconic dinosaurs, like the Tyrannosaurus rex and the Triceratops. Hey! <clears throat> and the Triceratops, which I understand you have an an ambition to cuddle with at some point. Yeah, it was a passing fancy. It was I a don't passing know. fancy. I've gotten over it. No more cuddling with extinct flora and fauna. Yeah, I mean, if I ever meet one, I'll go ahead and try to give it a hug, but it's just not going to be, it's not very likely. Right. Hugging a triceratops is ambitious. They could get uh, 25 to 30 feet long, about nine feet tall, Jeez. and they, uh, they weighed something. <laughs> <laughs> they weighed something. And they weighed as much as 12 tons. Whew. Okay. All of that would not keep me from trying to hug them. How are you going to I get just... around the big frilly thing at the back of their head? That's a problem. All yeah. right. I... Uh, it's like uh, like you nuzzle a horse face, you know. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> ignoring the nose horn and the two horns coming out from 
over the just yeah, it just gets worse okay. and worse. The head, by the way, was one of the largest heads of any critter on the land, uh, as much as eight feet long, and a full third of the entire body length. That is bigger than me. That is bigger than you. <sighs> well, I, 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 okay, my new ambition, <laughs> I want to pat a tricep. I want to gently caress. <laughs> <laughs> Look at you, you're all big and difficult to hug. <laughs> yes, and um, that showed up in the late Cretaceous along with the Tyrannosaurus Rex. Ah, the Rex. Yes, the Rex. Everybody knows that beast. Who lived in what is present-day western United States. They find them in places like Colorado, Utah, Wyoming. All right, the Tyrannosaurus Rex was also a ridiculously large critter. Mm. Uh, That's a technical way of putting it. Ridiculously, ridiculously large. Ridiculously like 12 feet tall at the hip. Uh, and maybe wow. as long as 40 feet. And weighing around 8 tons. And this is all based on a specimen that was nicknamed Sue, which is the <laughs> uh, largest Tyrannosaurus Rex we've found. Apparently we've only found about 50 specimens. Or so. Yeah, that's, yeah, you can well, that's that. actually a lot, isn't it? Now, comparatively speaking, but if you compare it to the Triceratops, we have lots and lots and lots of specimens of the... I suppose the herbivores generally outnumber the predators. That would make sense. Yeah. yeah. The T-Rex had small arms. There's been a lot of debate about whether or not those arms were useful for anything at all. Uh, once upon a time, you know, they told me that they'd screwed up the head on the brontosaurus, and uh, I got to wondering if those arms on the T-Rex weren't a mistake as well, but I could not find, yeah. Uh, They're 50 specimens they, you'd think they would have noticed by now. Yeah, I was wrong. But, I don't know, sometimes, these, uh, sometimes they make mistakes and the error persists for a ridiculously long time. They only had two claws on each of their front arms as opposed to three. And the arms, although small for the body, were uh, unusually strong for their size. He's flapping in the breeze. So, I think the theories range from holding prey while attacking to uh, helping hold their mate while mating to maybe hmm. a, a way to help spring from a prone position. That they they may actually have, may have been sort of a quasi ambush killers and they'd sort of crouch down on the ground and then leap up to attack and they'd use their arms to give them an extra boost to move those eight tons of dino meat <laughs> i guess whatever help you can get yeah no Thank kidding little arms only two claws so they didn't have any kind of any version of a thumb <laughs> i actually don't know which of the three claws was missing but i'd be willing to bet it was the thumb claw just because I feel bad. I, I feel worse for him. Now they can't even hold anything. The thumb claw. Would you call that a dew claw? For a time. Yeah, that makes sense to me. I, I guess uh, the sauropods had dew claws. Get that. Why? I or, or... don't know. Uh, neither <laughs> does anyone else. <laughs> <laughs> right. But that is as much about the dinosaurs. Oh, oh, feathers. The Tyrannosaurus yes. Rex may or may not have had feathers. Yeah, no, I'm just, you know, T-Rex, big mammoth dinosaur, you know, all sorts of testosterone-driven uh, images in my head, and you're going to give them feathers? Yeah, when they say feathers for something like a T-Rex, they're not talking about bird feathers. They're talking about sort of filaments that are sort of a precursor to feathers, although in the case of the Tyrannosaurus rex, it wasn't a precursor to anything. They died. <laughs> That's a good point. <laughs> Nothing that happened with the T-Rex was a precursor to anything. <laughs> <laughs> Same with the Triceratops. And every other dinosaur that wasn't a bird or wasn't on the way to becoming a bird, all the non-avian dinosaurs, died at the end of the Cretaceous. Uh, so the, the T-Rex and the Triceratops were only around for a couple of million years. Couple million. Couple million. So the what's the 
bird dinosaur, the 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 the, 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 the pterosaur. Ter oh, oh, that is not <laughs> not an ancestor of birds. Not a bird. The pterosaurs were yes. on a decline. Actually, they started to decline in the middle of the Cretaceous. Yeah, look, so they didn't make it. I, I it was bad. originally thought that they were in competition with the birds. Uh, the birds had uh, started developing in the Jurassic. You start to get some modern-looking birds in the Cretaceous, including, get this, the duck. Really? Yes. The, the, oh, the, the Jurassic duck. <laughs> This is why they're so dang arrogant, you know. Yeah, I've been here for forever. This is my planet. Give me some bread. <laughs> <laughs> Hand it over. Don't make me get all prehistoric on you. Oh, man, the duck. So did the duck become come before the goose? I mean, I've hated geese for a long time in my life. <laughs> ah, well, okay. The water birds were one mm. group that survived the extinction event. The others, there were... Uh, the family that has ostriches and emus and uh, those guys. They yeah, made it past it. the extinction, Ben. So okay. did a group called Gallus, which includes geese, turkeys, and chickens. Ah, those are the ones I hate. Yeah. Turkeys? Wait, they came from the same thing? Well, because <laughs> turkeys are dumb. <laughs> well, as opposed to those brilliant intellectual chickens you meet every day. Well, actually, I don't know about wild turkeys, um, but... Yeah, heard that turkeys will look up to see where the rain comes from. Oh, that's nonsense. Drown. They would have no. been extinct ages ago. Mm. It's a myth. This is why I wonder about wild turkeys versus these big fat things that we've raised. Big, well, okay, domestic ones might be that dumb. I don't know, it seems like a myth. Especially since the first time I heard that particular factoid was in the middle of a Ren and Stimpy cartoon. <laughs> I really... Uh, gotten entirely out of order. I was going to work my way up to the bits about the birds, but we've already covered everything about the birds. Well, I mean, the bird evolution has been a general trend towards weight, weight saving. So they lost their long tail and replaced it with a tail made up almost entirely of feathers. Which don't weigh much. And uh, then they lost their teeth and went in the beak direction. There were, in addition to the big extinction event at the end, a couple of minor extinction events caused by low oxygen in the water. Okay. One of them was about 117 million years ago. The other one happened uh, somewhere around 91 to 92 million years ago. The second one killed off a number of our old favorites. You remember the mm -hmm. Nessies? Yes. Yes, the plesiosaurs, long neck, paddle feet... They died. Same except thing happened, to, the, except, well, except for the one in one in Scotland. The one in Scotland it survived. Lived, lived in itself. a lake that didn't get formed until the Eocene. Never mind. It all makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the ichthyosaurs, the dolphin-like archosaurs or reptiles, also died out in that low oxygen event. And these are both air-breathing critters. Mm -hmm. So presumably they could get plenty of oxygen from the atmosphere. But that wasn't true of every last thing they ate. Oh. Yes. Yeah. Hard to live without, you know, Food. stuff to chew on. Mm -hmm. Now the really neat thing that happened in the Cretaceous was the spread of the flowering plants. Angiosperms. Okay. So, but flowering plants means fruit. Doesn't it? Fly, yes, that is their characteristic. Actually, the name angiosperm means uh, internal seeds or something along those lines. It's, it's referring to the fact that these are fruit that have seeds on the inside. Mm -hmm. As the angiosperms were spreading, we also get a spread of a number of insects. Or insect groups. Wasps. You've heard of them. I have. I hate them. In the Cretaceous. Both ants and bees develop from wasps. Really? Yes. Bees, big on pollinating. It's thought that uh, some wasp was eating various insects and started to munch down on some that were covered in pollen. Okay. And then one day went, you know, this is delicious. Why don't I just eat the pollen? 
<laughs> I can make a living off this. Well, you can make a living off this. Meanwhile, the angiosperms decided, man, all these things want to eat us. What if we use it? Yeah, we're, I'm going to make myself pretty. I'm going to make myself pretty and full of delicious sugary liquid. And then later I'll make fruit. So plants are out there and they're just trying everything. And if it works, you know, that sort of natural selection uh, argument, right? Right. But it, it seems to be, you know, method to their madness. Like they're actually honestly thinking about this. Stuff. Yeah, like the if the I illusion make a of fruit, intentionality that comes from watching uh, yeah. evolution in action. Especially since you look at bees, they have various anatomical I don't know, I don't know, parts of their bodies mm. are designed specifically to carry pollen around from one plant to another. The other thing that was happening for about 30 million years was diversification of the mammals. Mammals, yes. Okay. I knew there was a reason. There's something you can <laughs> hug. Uh, mammals are known to be, you know, comparatively smart. Uh, and I wonder about that. I, they spent all this time in the shadow of these thunder lizards. Mm-hmm. Uh, Maybe that had something to do with it. Maybe they had to go brains over brawn because all the brawny niches were already taken. They at least need to be smart enough to get out of the way of the feet. Thinking about something like a Tyrannosaurus rex or even a sauropod. Tons and tons of dino meat walking around. Mm -hmm. You, as a smaller species, would have a hell of an advantage if you could figure out what any kind of pattern that these larger animals were adopting. Oh, yeah. And uh, recognizing and exploiting patterns is sort of a hallmark of intelligence. You could even argue it's the definition. Then everybody okay. died. Everybody died. I was waiting for that. Hot. Here we are. <laughs> <laughs> Between 70 and 75% of all extant species at the end of the Cretaceous went bye-bye. I bumped into a factoid. I'm not sure I believe this. It said that outside of the crocodilomorphs, crocodiles and their kin, nothing mm -hmm. over 50 pounds in adult size survived. Well, that's really impressive if it's true. Uh, yeah, it's uh, one of those things that gets said in articles that kind of scratch your head. Are you sure about that? Yeah. Uh, lots of plants died. A major cause for the extinction is assumed to be the rock that hit us something like 9 to 15 miles wide. It left a crater that was about 160 miles across. Happened to hit in an area that had a lot of sulfur-bearing rocks, which then got vaporized, that uh, lowered the global temperature and also gave us acid rain for a few decades. Which doesn't sound very comfortable. <laughs> oh, it's, it's just fun! <laughs> Let's go hang out and go swimming. Or you see the Wizard of Oz? I'm melting! <laughs> I'm sorry, my, I hit a button I shouldn't have. Anyways, yes. Um, lots of plant death at the, after that uh, rock hit the earth. It seems like the species that did survive could survive on detritus, dead plant matter, and other things that ate it. So you're getting omnivores and scavengers. It's not that the reason the crocodiles could survive, uh, crocodilomorphs in general, and the crocodiles in particular, is mm -hmm. because they have a fairly low metabolism. They can go for months at a time without food. So they can just sort of wait it out. So it's thought that uh, that's how the crocodilomorphs survived. They had a much lower food requirements when compared to things like mammals and birds and even the dinosaurs who metab whose metabolisms are turned up quite a bit more. So yeah, the that's... dinosaurs are dead, which is good because I'm tired of dinosaurs. In fact, I'm... I'm getting antsy. I need to move away from natural history for a while. We're going to come back and hit the age of mammals. In the meantime, uh, next time it will be an episode on some other topic entirely. I'm leaning towards doing an episode or two on geology. But no promises. Whatever we're doing, we'll see you next time. And bye. Bye.